Hello, church. What a joy it is, again, that we have an opportunity from many different homes and many different places to come together and proclaim the living God together. And if you've ever wondered if it's a place that you belong, yes, this is exactly where you belong. And if you've ever wondered, is this a thing that I should be doing? Yes, this is by God what you were created to do, to give worship to our Lord. And so we're going to begin this worship service. This service is going to take a, make its beginning the same way your Christian faith began in your baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at whatever time of day that we're worshiping, and we thank you, Lord, for having an opportunity um, to make your name known. Lord, both on our head and our heart, with our lips, with our hands, all the different forms of worship in our households today, that, Lord, we are in a place where we can proclaim your name. And I ask, Lord, that um, you let us push all the other things aside in our life that often creep into our heads and our hearts, and you let us, um, with the people that we're with, united with all the people in all their different households, um, just enjoy and mark this time as sacred and belonging to you. So help us to do that as your kids, Lord. Amen. We sing. Our scripture reading is going to be in the book of Luke. So if you go and grab your Bibles or open up your, your phone apps, um, you have an opportunity to go to the book of Luke and then go to chapter 24, starting in verse 44. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany 
and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Rachel, we invite you up to lead us in a children's message. Boys and girls and families, I am so happy to be with you. We miss you a lot, but it's great that we can still be together in worship. I'm glad that you are tuning in and worshiping with your families. So I've been thinking a lot about you and all of the changes that you have experienced these past few months. There are a lot of changes. And one is that you went from being in your classrooms at school and being with your teachers in person to learning at home online. You had to say goodbye to your teacher. How does that make you feel? Well, today in our scripture reading, Pastor Chad just read about the ascension of Jesus. Ascension. Have you heard that word before? That is when Jesus, after having been raised from the dead and appearing to his disciples, 40 days after that, went back up into heaven. The disciples had to say goodbye because they were no longer with Jesus in person. How do you think that made them feel? Well, the disciples were not left alone. Jesus promised to send them the Holy Spirit to be with them. Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to be with you. So you are never, ever alone, even in the midst of so many changes. Even when you are not with your teacher in person, you will be with your teacher again. One day, with all of your teachers in a classroom, that'll happen at some point. But before that happens, because your teachers love you so much, they will spend lots of time preparing your classroom. So I brought a couple things with me that shows that teachers love having really clean classrooms. So I'll bet they'll have some Lysol or Clorox wipes and they will make that classroom spick and span. And I'll bet your teachers will have lots of great books for you to read upon your return. And I'll bet that your teachers will have lots of great school supplies for you to use upon your return. Your teachers love you and they are preparing a place in a classroom for you. Jesus is preparing a place for you in heaven. Listen to this Bible verse. This is from John 14 verse 3 and it says this, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Check it out. Pastor Chad, thank you very much. Oh my, we have balloons. I love balloons. They remind me of happiness and joy. And do you know what? There will be no greater joy than the joy that we will have when we are with Jesus again in person, face to face, forever. Heaven is coming. Let's pray. Fold your hands. Close your eyes. This will be an echo prayer, so repeat my words. Dear God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you that there is a place for us being prepared in heaven. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. Great to be with you. Oh, no. 
I want you to do me a favor this week. I want you to go on a little bit of an adventure with me. Um, in preparation for this message today, I, I googled the greatest questions in the Bible. I'd like you to do that this week with those who are around you, whether it's the family or you as a couple or you individually. Um, and then it's a great devotion and a great exercise to begin to say, well, what are godly answers? What are godly answers to these questions? Um, a couple of the greatest questions in the Bible, Ascension Day takes care of for us because I believe that those guys had a lot of questions going on in their mind. There are questions in other parts of the Bible, like, like the Israelites quarreled among themselves and asked this question. Is God among us or not? Jesus himself asked a couple of questions, one right after the other. He said to the disciples, he said this, who do the people say that I am? And then he made it even more personal for them, for you, for me. What about you? Who do you say that I am? There are great questions in the Bible. And it's a great journey of faith for you that I'd, I'd challenge you to do this week as you're together in your home, with your people, with your family. It's a great journey. One of the great questions that I think Ascension Day brings to us is a question that was asked in Psalm 121. The psalmist begins by saying, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Here's the question. Where does my help come from? <laughs> in these days, as you live in these days with the challenges of doing life the way you personally are doing life in these days, what a great question. What a great set of questions those questions are for you today, for me today. I want to focus on this one. Where does my help come from? I think, among other things, that question had to be going on in the heads of the disciples as they see Jesus take off to be seated at the right hand of the Father, and he disappears from their sight. So let's dive in to these texts. Pastor Chad read Luke 24, so get that back open again. Luke 24, 44 through 53 is the text I want to take you to today. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. In other words, before the resurrection, because this is Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, talking to his disciples after the resurrection. He says to them, this is what I told you. Everything must be fulfilled that was written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. See, Jesus came to fulfill the word of God from beginning to end for you, for me, that he would be our Messiah, that he would be the Lamb of God without spot or blemish that would take away the sins of the world. That is why he came to redeem you, to free you, to get you home to paradise regained. Then he says, then the text says, then he opened their minds. He opened their minds so that they could understand everything that was behind them. He says to them, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Now I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you receive this gift. What did they receive? Well, it's not really a what. It's a who. <laughs> they received on the day of Pentecost, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit to call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify them so that they wouldn't just have their minds open to what he had been talking about and what he had fulfilled for them, but they would also know and understand where they were while Jesus was in heaven and how it was that the Holy Spirit would connect them to him between now and the day that he comes again to get us home. 
And then it says, when he had said this, he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany. He lifted up his hands. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them. And the picture there is, look, as the Lord blesses you, you are blessed. And it's a, it's a continual action if you are a believer in Jesus. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Did they have questions? <laughs> you bet. Did they have fear and confusion over what was about to happen to them and about a not really yet understanding because Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, hadn't yet been given. They hadn't yet received spirit, the power from on high. But they worshiped in spite of their circumstance. They rejoiced and had joy in spite of their fears and their circumstance. Then... I want to take you to, I want to take you to the actual event, because again, this is Luke in Acts in the first chapter. He tells us then what actually happened on that day. He says this, they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. This is Acts 1, 10 and 11. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly Two angels, two men dressed in white stood beside them and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who you just saw go into the sky, he will come back and he will take you to be with him. He will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. So there they are. There they are looking up into heaven and they're looking for him and I know that there are questions going on in their mind. Okay. You've opened my heart and my life, my mind, to understand what all that was about and how you fulfilled it all. And I know what I know now. You know what you know now. But there are things that you may be experiencing right now that give you question and give you angst and give you frustration or fret or worry or concern about now or these days out in front of us, between now and the day that he gets you home. Because understand that the gift of the ascension is that this same Jesus who came is seated at the right hand of the Father and he intercedes for you so that when your life laid open before the Father, when he looks into your life, he sees you with Jesus at his right hand. He who lived and he who died and he who rose again for you. So that you would have forgiveness, abundant life, salvation, and your way right into the arms and the heart of the Father through Jesus. He is first and foremost seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you until he comes again. And when he comes again, he won't come as a babe in a manger. He will come as king of kings and lord of lords to take believers, you and me, and all of those around the world who believe in him as Lord and Christ. He will take us home to be with him forever, which is, as Paul says, is better by far. But see, the problem is those aren't my only questions. My only question is, don't just have to do with what's he up to now and when's he going to come back again and take me home? I need, I have questions about how is it that, that I can find him right now between now and the day that he gets me home? Does he just leave me until he comes again? The gift of the ascension that he who came lived, died, rose again, and ascended into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in the last day. He comes to you now, right now, in very specific places, in very specific ways. Isaiah calls us, Isaiah 55 calls us to seek him where he may be found 
To seek him while he may be found. To seek him while he is near. You see, right now, right now, in this day in which you live, with everything that it throws at you, there are places, very specific places, that he has designed for you. Not me, not Chad, not the church, not anybody else, but one-on-one between you and him, places that he has designed for you to find him now by faith so that he would be with you between now and the day that he gets you home. He comes to you in his word. He comes to you in his word. So dive in in these days. Dive in in these days to his word. If you need a place to do that, you can do that one-on-one between you and him just by opening that word of God. If you want to do that uh, with those that you can gather around you, that's great. At the church, if you want to do that right now with me and Chad, Chad's going to start a new Bible study on Wednesday night. Uh, He's been teaching one, going to teach a new one that's starting next week um, on Wednesday nights at 8. He's going to take them through the, what book is it? The book of Jude. The book of Jude. What a great journey. Right? What a great journey. Um, so, so join Chad in that. If you want to join me on Thursday mornings at 10, oh, we're, I'm going to help you build your storehouse of the Word of God. So we'll dive into the Word of God together so that you can have, so that you can have uh, the Word to take with you no matter where you go and no matter what comes at you. One of the first places that he meets you now by faith and by the gift of the Holy Spirit to open that up to you is by his Word. One of the places that he has met you, many of you, he met you in the waters of your baptism, called you by name, and said to you, for the rest of your life, you're mine. I give you new identity. I am with you. And if you ever need to know in the midst of the mess of your life that I have called you by name and you belong, and you belong to me, then look no further than the waters of your baptism that connect you to the Christ of the cross in the empty tomb. He comes to you in the bread and the wine of the Lord's Supper to locate himself, to feed you along the way and to give you his strength and his love and connect you again to that forgiveness that was bought for you over 2,000 years ago on the other side of the world. He comes to you as you call out to him in conversation that we call prayer. There is great power in these places where he locates himself to keep you strong between now and the day that he who ascended to the right hand of the Father comes again to take us home to be with him forever in paradise. There is also this place that is very unique to this day. He says to us, wherever two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Wherever two or more are gathered, even for such a time as this, to be able to be connected. He doesn't say it has to be closer than six feet, (laughs) but he does say connection. And it is imperative that brothers and sisters in Christ, family, the family of God remain connected in these days so that Christ reigns and rules and is present in and among them in these days. There are questions that the Bible asks us. And the great question of today is this. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? We look around in these days, and when you lift up your eyes to the hills, you see screens everywhere. (laughs) I'm tired of screens. You see screens everywhere. And if it's a TV screen, you, you listen to talking heads and you, and you hear them rant and rave about one side of an issue or another, and it bombards you. Other parts of screens, you see social media in all of the different ways with either those kinds of friends that aren't really possibly friends at all, um, but you see people with opinion, and that bombards you. You have family and you have friends around you that make contact with you. And so 
you lift up your eyes to the hills and you look all around you and you are bombarded in these days. But know beyond a shadow of a doubt that almighty God, Jesus Christ himself, comes to you to be with you in those ways, in his word, in the water, in the bread, the wine, in the, in the prayer life of the people of God, wherever two or more are gathered together in his name, he comes to you. And when those people are gathered, whether that be friends or uh, godly friends or, or, or family, as they give to you godly care, love, concern, and wisdom from his word, you are then lifted up. My prayer for you in these days is that you will know that when you lift up your eyes to the hills, you will know, like the disciples would learn on Pentecost Day, you will know where your help comes from. Psalm 121 verse 2 says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He who came, lived, died, rose, ascended into heaven, and will come again at the last day to take us home and comes to you now to keep you strong, faithful, wise, and able to navigate these days by his grace and his presence with you all along your way. In his name we pray. Amen. We pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your Son to everyone gathered together in your name this day. I thank you that you locate yourself for us to be with us all along our way. And I ask you, dear Lord, as we lift up our eyes and we look around us, that you would show us where to find our help in you, in you, dear Jesus, in you. I ask you, dear Lord, that you would reign and rule in each home, in each life, and that you would take up center stage in those places, and that you would, dear Lord, inspire your people to respond to your great love and your presence. Dear Lord, at this moment, we, we give an offering. We give an offering to you in response to your great love. We give an offering to you in response to the way that you have given us together, the family of God in the ministry of God in this place, your cause and your call. So dear Lord, I ask you that you would be with us and inspire your people this day to worship you with their tithes and offerings. In your name we pray, amen. So this is that time. This is that time for you uh, uh, to write that check or to go online on your phone and, and to give. And if you want to start giving online, we have a short video here for you to show you how to do that.
Jana and the worship team just the simple title of that song, Behold Him, to take into your head and to take in your heart a living God, right? And your, your head and your heart can't do that. My head and my heart can't do that. Um, but we have this opportunity um, throughout the course of this worship, um, throughout the course of all that we've been through together, and now we have an opportunity in prayer to behold a living God. And so I ask that you calm that head. I ask that you center that heart. And let's go to our God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just had an opportunity to sing Behold You. To, to behold something that's from before time um, to the end of time, to coming back to claim both the living and the dead, Lord. It's more than we can take in. And yet, Lord, you have chosen to call us. You have chosen to make us yours. You have chosen um, to have a relationship with us and to pour grace upon us. And that, once again, is something, Lord, we cannot comprehend. And I ask, Lord, through the gift of that Spirit, through the gift of your Holy Spirit, Lord, um, that that would be something that you would open up us to throughout the course of our life. To be better at understanding your love and to be better at reflecting your love to other people. Lord, we um, gather here this weekend, and as we gather, Lord, we um, are a country that is um, celebrating Memorial Day. And as we celebrate Memorial Day, we think about countless people that have laid their life down for other people. There's no greater picture than that, than yet of Jesus Christ laying his life down for us. And, and so, Lord, out of um, the people that have laid down their lives for us in the military and in, 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 um, in, in being police officers and being firefighters and paramedics and all those different things that have laid down their lives for people they don't know, and for that of Jesus Christ laying down his life, Lord, for us, I ask that it would increase our ability to lay down our lives and to put things aside for other people. Lord, um, this weekend, there's lots of different students celebrating graduation, and Lord, I ask that um, you help each and every one of those kids realize that every good and great gift comes from you. And I ask that, Lord, um, you let them realize that the way that they've grown in their intelligence and in their relationships and in, in just in their feelings has all been a gift from you. And I ask, Lord, that you bring in comfort and peace to the schools that can't quite celebrate those graduates in the way that they would have wanted to. I ask, Lord, that um, for each and every one of us as your kids, Lord, you would increase in us thankfulness. Not let us get caught up in the small things. Um, let those little things upset us or those little things um, change us or rule over us, Lord, but let us increase in thankfulness to you. I ask, Lord, that um, you hold us in the palm of your hand and you let us know that we have been marked as your kids. All this we ask in your most precious and holy name. And all God's people say, Amen. And now receive your blessing. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless your comings and your goings, both now and forevermore. Amen.